If you want to learn how to make a thumb guard to help someone in your life stop sucking their thumbs, then just keep watching after these bloopers. <laughs> go back, go back. No, <laughs> no. I hate making mutton holes. And these four, as oh dear, Nate, because these thumb socks. Hi, crafty people. Today I'm joined by my two girls, Alice here, who is two years old, and Isabel here, who is four years old, and they're showing you the thumb guards that I've made. We've been calling them thumb socks, or thumb gloves, or thumb guards, but we've been using these to help encourage our children to stop sucking their thumbs. Do you like wearing them, or you ra would rather suck your thumb? It's been a long journey of trying to encourage our children to stop sucking their thumbs. We've tried quite a few different things, but this has seemed to be a pretty useful technique in helping our kids to remember that their thumbs are not meant to go in their mouths. The way I've designed these thumb gloves are so that there are different ways you can attach them to your child's hand, depending on what type of closure they can't do because you don't want them taking them off. And you can also design them so that they will fit your child's hand perfectly. I'm going to include in this tutorial how you can pattern a correct size for the person's hand that you are using. But I'll also leave a link to the template that I've used for my girls. Just a free download in the description box if you would like to use that. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. If you enjoy content like this, I would love for you to subscribe so you can come back and see some of our future content. But with all of that being said, let's, let's get, get making. making! Yeah! <laughs> My mum makes a thumb guard. I'm going to start by explaining a bit of my thought process when I was designing what I wanted to make for these thumb socks. I've gone through quite a few prototypes to get to this point. I've lost the original one, uh, but this was my second attempt at a thumb sock. It here uh, was covering their thumb with all of their fingers poking through this section, and I'd found a way to line it so it looked good, and I had... Um, a snap on it here to make it easy to go on and off but in the end the stretchiness of this fabric and this massive hole here meant that well, as you can tell I can put it on myself so of course the kids able to take it off it was just way too easy for them to take off and get access to their thumb so this one didn't work then I moved on to this prototype here and in this one I have a piece of bias tape here that I used so that I could tie it together and see if that worked and the overall design of this worked better. I liked having this sort of webbing detail in between the thumb and the fingers. They weren't able to suck on the sock because this part here meant that they couldn't get their mouth right around the thumb. The problem with this one though was that they were able to pull their thumb down far enough to poke it through the hole where these fingers were. I hadn't solved that problem there with all the fingers just being one continuous section. So with all of those things to consider, I then moved on to this prototype here and these two are exactly the same, this pink one and this yellow one here. Uh, and this one I've made so that it's got each of the fingers is in a separate little part, a bit like a fingerless glove and the thumb here with this webbing in the middle again so that they can't use their thumb. This one was a lot better because even if they could pull their thumb out of this section, having one finger in these tight sections meant they couldn't poke their thumb through this section here. But what they did choose to do was that they could poke it down the bottom here. The way I've attached the snaps on this one, uh, it had to have one of the sides open so that it could sort of fluctuate with how tight or how loose you had the snaps. But in doing that, I've had to leave a bit of a gap here and it was enough of a gap that they could pull their thumb all the way down to poke it out of the bottom. So in the next version that I made after that, I've ended up putting the gap that it does need to be there in order to have, or you can see it a bit better here, in order to have the snaps stretch across to get tighter or looser, you do need a bit of loose fabric here so that it is able to have a bit of place to give. But I've put that on the side away from their thumb. So this one here is the template that I'm going to be working on today to show you. And it's uh, going to have the webbing, the enclosed thumb, each finger enclosed uh, and this part here near the thumb, underneath the thumb on the wrist side is going to be the side that is um, trapped <laughs> uh, and the open side is on the wrist near the little finger. 
I'm going to be going through how to make three different types of the pretty much exact same thing. So this one here, I have put snaps on it as a closure. This one here has a button and then a few buttonholes so that you can choose how tight you're going to make it. And lastly, I have one that ties up. The reason I'm showing you three different options is because it might depend on what closure your child can't undo. If you've watched any of my videos before about making kids clothes, I always say to use a closure that the kid can do independently. But this is the opposite because you actually don't want them taking <laughs> these off. I do think that all of these are still quite comfortable. My kids sleep with these on and they've never had any issues with them being uncomfortable. So these are just what have worked for my kids and our family. But of course you can do the style that suits your family or have a chat to a professional in your life that might be able to better recommend what would be suitable to help your kids stop sucking their thumb. So to get started, I'm going to show you how I made the template to make these thumb socks so that you can pattern one out for your kid so that it suits their sized hand as well. When I'm showing you this in my example, I'm actually using my hand because I didn't think it was fair for me to try and feel my kids sitting still while I did this. So in order to make this thumb sock pattern, you're going to place the hand flat down on the piece of paper, ideally the hand that's going to be wearing the thumb sock, and you're going to be tracing around the hand. You don't want to have the fingers spread out or the thumb in an uncomfortable position. You just want it in a nice, naturally relaxed position. You're going to trace around each of the thumb and marking where the fingers are and also marking where the wrist point is. Although we are going to extend this a bit below the wrist so that we're able to add any closures around the wrist. As I mentioned before, there is a webbing detail between the thumb and the fingers. So we're going to make a straight line from the tip of the thumb over to the fingers and we're going to shade that in just to remember that that part will be the webbing part. The base of your thumb sock will need to be slightly wider than the child's wrist to make sure that they're able to slide it on and off of their wrist before you tie it shut. Because we're using a stretchy fabric, I didn't add seam allowance around any of this pattern because I want it to be tight to their hand, not uncomfortably tight, but tight enough that it's not easy for them to remove. Once you've traced out your pattern and it looks similar to this, you can cut it out of your paper and it'll be ready for us to cut out of our stretchy fabric. The fabric that I'm using for these thumb socks today is actually some that I've salvaged from items of clothing that were just not able to be donated. Maybe they were stained or they had holes in them. And rather than just throwing those items of clothing away, I like to take as much of the fabric off as is still usable and any of the zips or buttons or anything like that. I shared a short about that last week if you haven't seen it yet. So all of the thumb socks that I'm sharing with you today have been made from that kind of salvaged fabric. The first thing I did once I had my stretchy fabric was to fold the fabric in half and put my pattern on top so that I was able to trace around the thumb sock design that I have made, including tracing out where I want the webbing detail to go and tracing where each of the fingers is divided by that little uh, marking that we added on the pattern. I'm going to trace the pattern now on each of the fabrics that I'm using for each of the three different thumb socks designs that I'm making. On this one here with the heart design on it, I have decided just to put the edge of my pattern piece against the edge of the fold. If you don't want to have to sew that side down, you can just move your pattern piece over. Of course, a finger isn't designed to be sort of flat or a hand, the edge of your hand isn't a straight line, but you can just manipulate it so that it's roughly the same size. On this one, I've also put it against the bottom of, this used to be a t-shirt, so I already have that side hemmed. You will notice that I don't actually hem or finish edges properly on any of these. The reason being these are not used as a fashion accessory. I don't intend for them to be lasting very long. I hope that my kids don't suck their thumbs for very long. So I really hope that we're not using these for very long. But the reason I haven't finished it off, stretchy fabrics aren't going to fray and I don't really think that they care. The girls don't really care what they look like. So I haven't bothered hemming them. But on this particular one, I did use the hem that was already existing there because why not, it's already there. On some of them, I also did cut some long strips so that I could use for ties. Uh, so I cut them out. I'll explain to you how I use them when we get to the construction part. Let's start by constructing our first thumb sock. And this one's going to be the one with the ribbon tie detail. So to start making our thumb sock, we're going to leave our two pattern pieces with wrong sides together. And we're going to be sewing only on the right side of the fabric. As with any project that uses a knit fabric, we are going to change to a stretch needle. And I'm also going to be changing to a stitch that works on stretch fabrics. You could use a zigzag stitch or you could use an over edge stitch like I'm using here. It looks like a straight line with a zigzag next to it. 
Once your machine's all set to sew with a stretchy fabric, we're going to be sewing around the thumb sock. We're going to start at the base of the wrist and sew up and over the thumb down to where the webbing part of your natural thumb would be and back up again where we have marked the side of your pointer finger. Then we're going to fill in that webbing section by just sewing random lines back and forwards until that part looks relatively firm and like the webbing I'm showing you. Then we're going to stitch the other side of the hand. Again, we're going to start at the wrist and go up to the top of the little finger. Next, we're going to sew the little markings we have between each of the fingers so that they can't put their thumb through those finger holes. And they will all be in individual fingers, uh, a bit like a fingerless glove. So I'm going to use a very narrow zigzag stitch to sew slightly down and up, very small, probably about a half a centimeter. So quarter of an inch maybe, very small little section to make each of those fingers separated from each other. We're going to follow this same construction process for each of these thumb socks. It's going to be fairly similar, although of course the one cut on the fold where you don't need to sew that side, we can just sew the one side near the thumb. With our thumb sock now constructed, we can add in the closure around the wrist so that they're not able to take it off. First example I'm showing you is how I used a piece of ribbon to tie it up onto their wrist. Originally, as I said, I intended to use these long strips of fabric to make a tie, but uh, once I realized that wasn't going to work, I found a piece of ribbon instead. So we're going to be sewing the ribbon about halfway around the wrist or three quarters of the way around with the open side being on the part near the uh, little finger here. I pin the ribbon on roughly in the middle of my wrist and then going around the thumb side of the thumb sock to about halfway on the back of the wrist. And I just use a zigzag stitch to sew that on. I used a white thread to sew it on because I thought, oh, I don't, I don't want to change my thread. It won't bother me. It doesn't matter. But it kind of does bother me now. And so I kind of want to unpick it and use green. But I, uh, I don't know. Do I care enough? Should I unpick it? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. So this here is what it looks like once the ribbon has been stitched on. Again, I've got it stitched with the stitched side underneath the thumb. Uh, because I learned that lesson the hard way and the two open sides here on the side with the little finger. I've made this long enough so that I can wrap it around uh, like twice and then tie a bow on it and I have been double knotting the bow as well just to make sure that my girls can't untie it. So this is what this one looks like now that it's done. And now we'll move on to the construction of the next one. The next one I made was the one with the button on it. And I must admit, my button foot was being very frustrating. So I ended up having quite a few issues making this. And I had to do a lot of practice runs of my buttonhole on some scrap fabric before it would work. I think my machine's telling me it needs a service. In any case, here is what it looks like with the button on it. Uh, the difference with this one is I made this little tab here to stick out of the side so that I could stick the button on so that I could uh, close it over. So in order to do that, I cut a strip of my fabric off and I made a little tube folding it over on itself and sewing down one short edge and one long edge. When I flipped it out the right way, it created this little tab. I slid this little tab in between the two sides of my thumb sock before I sewed it shut so that it was able to be enclosed uh, within the seam. Then on the inside of the thumb sock, I snipped off any of the excess of that tab. Then I hand sewed the button onto the tab, making sure that the button was going to be facing down so that it would be on top of the buttonholes when I was ready to close it. As I said, I did have a few issues with my buttonhole foot, so they're really not perfect and certainly not aligned with each other. But again, the aesthetics of it don't really bother me or the kids very much, so it doesn't really matter to me. But the way this one works is that you're able to then take the button and slide it into the buttonhole that matches the width of the wrist you're putting it on. Uh, and then you're able to slide it out when you need to. I do think that maybe I could have put the buttonholes horizontally rather than vertically because when you do stretch this fabric it opens the buttonholes up quite a lot and it makes it easy for the girls to pop the button out uh, so maybe if the buttonholes were going this way instead once it stretches it wouldn't actually help them to take the buttons out of the buttonholes so that would probably be an adjustment i make if i do a button one again the last thumb sock design that i made was this one here with snaps on it I do have a snap press machine, but I also am going to show you how you could have the same sort of effect if you don't have a snap press machine. I'll go through that in a minute. But 
we're going to go back to our original design here where we've already cut out our fabric and we've already sewn it together into our standard thumb stop shape. Then I've made a very small tube, a very thin one, and again I've sewn down one short side and then all the way down the one very long side. And I've made this so that it is long enough to loop around the thumb sock on both the front and back and then a little bit overhanging on the edge. I sewed that tube around the thumb sock as I did with the ribbon, except this time I've started right on the edge of the fabric here underneath the little finger and I've gone all the way around to the back middle of the back. So I've gone three quarters of the way around the wrist. Again, I've made sure that the sewn side is against the thumb and the open side here is on the back uh, on the little finger side. Once that strip is sewn on, we're able to add the snaps. So I've chosen to add two straps to the tab that's hanging off. And then I've added quite a lot of straps along the base of the front of my thumb sock. Depending on whether Isabel or Alice is wearing them, they do need a different wrist size. If you don't have a snap machine like this, you might still like to make one. And the way I did this one was actually through using an old item of clothing, an old baby onesie, which had a row of snaps already on the bottom of it. Like I mentioned before, I don't like to throw clothes away that are still usable in some way or another. And this item of clothing wasn't usable in certain sections, but it had enough fabric for me to salvage to cut out the thumb sock. And the snaps at the bottom were still working perfectly fine. Here's another example here of a baby onesie that's on my to be cut pile. And this onesie here, you could cut out the thumb sock using this part here. And then the snaps at the bottom, you could cut along this section here so that you're just taking off this band at the bottom with the snaps. That's what I did with that pink one and the yellow one. Then I was able to repurpose these snaps on this band and I just sewed that band directly onto the bottom of the thumb sock here. So this band here that these snaps are attached to, it used to be the band that's attached to the bottom of a onesie just like this. So if you don't have a snap machine, but you do think that snaps would be a good option for your kid, uh, you could find an old item of clothing that has snaps on it and just repurpose it that way. So you've now seen all of the different options of thumb socks that I have made for our kids. And I hope this was a helpful video for you. If you have a kid in your life that is also struggling to stop sucking their thumb, I do hope that this works for you because it is hard to find strategies to encourage your kids to stop doing it. In the end, it's only going to be their willpower and determination and persistence that's going to really be the determining factor of whether they can stop sucking their thumb. But I do think that these thumb guards are a really useful tool to help encourage them as they're learning this skill. If you found this video useful, I would love for you to press the like button and you can subscribe to come back and see some of my future content. You could also follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see a bit of what I'm up to during the week or follow me on Facebook as well. If you'd like to watch another of my videos after this, I'll link a few in the description box and a few will pop up at the end of this video in the cards. So thanks again for watching and until next time, go get creative and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.